Hello, Squirrel Tribe. Do any of you remember the name Rachel Dolezal? I'm pretty sure that's how she said it. You might not remember her. A lot of people probably don't remember her, but she is famous for pretending to be black. She is a fully white woman born to two white parents, 100% Caucasian, who fooled the NAACP and numerous others into thinking she was black because of how she did her hair, the fact that she just said she was black. Who really knows? But she used to be part of the NAACP. She was a leader for them. And it came out at some point, I don't remember when, I remember when it happened, that she was not a black female at all. But what this goes to prove is that anybody, I don't know, like somebody who's running for president, maybe, can just say they're black and it will be accepted. Because if you try to combat them on their blackness, you will be called a racist. So Kamala Harris running around and letting people believe that she's black is okay. But everybody else pointing out that you can literally look at birth certificates and you know everything else that goes along with where her dad came from and where her mom came from who their parents were and everything else to prove that she is not a black female that's racist you're not allowed to do that you must let them believe that she is black which is absolutely crazy to me even when dana bash during that cnn interview with uh, kamala harris and tim walls made the comment about trump saying you know she came out as black out of nowhere not quite sure and instead of kamala harris finally setting the record straight and saying yes i am you know indian but i am also black in some way shape or form she said next question please she would not answer it. She would not clarify because she knows if she were to physically say where there is proof of her saying that, yes, she is black, they would have to pull a whole Rachel Dolezal with her and prove that she's not, which we can prove again anyway. But it's still very interesting to me that we're literally watching history repeat itself. We watched a woman who does not have any blackness in her pretend to be black and it got you know bought up and lapped up by everybody and she was able to run with the NAACP and then finally it came out that she wasn't and ostracized completely but why are they not doing the same thing to Kamala Harris what's also interesting before we get into the rest of this stuff my husband and I have a patreon where we share more information here that we can't share on YouTube there's a lot of free stuff over there and we'll just put up random stuff that has to do with what's going on with the election or with Donald Trump Kamala Harris any kind of news related things right and it turns out that if you were to, we figured this out earlier today, we tried to put up a post about Kamala Harris and Patreon would not let it through. They would not let us talk, put out the words Kamala Harris. We had to title it Hamala Harris, yet we could easily put up Donald Trump. Even Patreon and other places do not want people talking about Kamala Harris here on YouTube speaking negatively or honestly and truthfully about Kamala Harris gets your views in the toilet gets everything you know they, they suppress it they don't show it but for people out there who are talking great about Kamala Harris to the moon you know what I mean like it's it's crazy the amount of hiding of information that is being done by the people in power, the uh, Google themselves, Alphabet, uh, and others that do not want the information about Kamala Harris out. There's a lot of stuff you cannot find. You go and, and try to find pictures, certain types of pictures for Kamala Harris, and it won't show you anything. There was a time where you would try to, you know, look up Donald Trump assassination attempt, and it was showing Kamala Harris stuff instead as the first things that came up. And it's like, how is this the way we are? I just, I wanted to mention that to everybody because I think it's very important to keep in mind that we're never being shown the full truth because they they cannot let the full truth out because then people would see that they are trying to hoodwink the American people. Speaking of hoodwinking, who the hell is running our country? It has been 16 days that Joe Biden has been on vacation. Listen, I I've worked corporate America before and I understand you get, you know, sick pay and vacation time and sometimes you want to save it all and clump it all together at the end of the year, like before, during holidays and whatever, or right before you quit and before you're out of, uh, out of your job, you know that you're either going to quit, they're going to fire you. So you try to use all your vacation, sick pay, whatever, all at once. That's what Joe Biden is doing. He is literally using all of his vacation at the end of his whatever. But what's interesting is it's not the end of his presidency yet. He is still technically president until I believe it's January 6th is when the next one's sworn in. January 20th is when they take over. So I'm pretty sure he is still technically president. But the fact that he has been on vacation for 16 days in a row, chilling at the beach, making phone calls. There's his secret service person in the background telling people to keep walking, keep a truck. And you've got uh, Joe and Jill and some other lady there. I don't know who the other person is. Maybe 
they're maybe they're into pineapple type stuff upside down pineapples um but you have him there chilling on the phone doing whatever and it's like bro you've been on vacation for 16 days now my personal opinion and i've said it numerous times and i will state it again this october surprise that everybody keeps expecting when it comes to you know the the presidency and the election and everything else it's going to be joe biden literally stepping away from the presidency and handing the reins to kamala harris i fully believe that's what's going to happen sometime in october that kamala harris will then be acting president right now she is still technically the vice president Although all she's really doing is campaign smearing and whatever else. She posted 21 tweets on X over the last 24 hours disparaging Donald Trump. Nothing else. There was one post that were, were put up on her ex account uh, as Vice President Kamala Harris and on Joe, Joe Biden's account as president in regards to the gentleman who lost his life in Hamas, who he was a... Um, hostage there since October 7th. He was a 23 year old American man. I don't have his name. I did not save it. And I cannot remember it. And it makes me feel awful at this point in time. But he was one of the, the, the few that were taken hostage. I think there were six or seven that were taken hostage uh, by Hamas in, during a concert on October 7th and it was released that he has been killed he has lost his life and they the vice president Kamala Harris and sitting president Joe Biden both had a statement put out on X neither one of them have taken a stage neither one of them have said anything you know to the American people like you would normally expect because once again Joe Biden is on vacation and vice president Kamala Harris has forgotten that she's a vice president instead she's just somebody campaigning for Joe Biden's seat nobody is running our country right now which may be why this gentleman lost his life because there's nobody there trying to actually put a stop to what's going on. Nobody there actually trying to get hostages back. None of that's happening because Joe Biden is sitting his dumpy ass on a beach and talking on the phone and hanging out with his wife instead of sitting in the White House where he belongs, making sure that the American people are safe, making sure that American hostages are being released. None of that. They've both said numerous times via X that they're doing everything they can to get a ceasefire and whatever else. How? You work, I mean, I can work remotely. This is, this is a different kind of work remote. You're not gonna tell me you're sitting on a beach in, in, on, on a beach chair in Rehoboth Beach in Delaware with waves crashing in the background talking to anybody that has anything to do with stopping what's going on between um, you know, Palestine and Israel and everything else. That's not happening right now. He's sitting there probably ordering DoorDash or something like that, chocolate ice cream to the beach. Just nobody running our country is something we should all be very, very worried about right now. And the fact that this October surprise could very, very well be Kamala Harris taking over as the president. Now, the fact that she has dropped out of the debate to me is also very, very suspicious. The September 4th debate that she said yes to in order to get Donald Trump to say yes to the September 10th debate. Once he said yes to the September 10th debate, she backed out of the September 4th debate. And now she's trying to change the rules again on the September 10th debate. And I feel like she'll try to back out of that one as well. They just had Hillary Clinton post up that she's not going to be on, cam on Kamala's campaign trail because she has COVID. Hillary Clinton says she has COVID, that, that it happened at the DNC. They're saying the DNC was a super spreader, which is hilarious because most of those people are the same ones that got 15, you know, shots in the arm. You didn't hear about any kind of COVID super spread at the RNC. Most of those people didn't do anything in their arm. Just going to put that out there like that and y'all take that how you will. But now they're saying that Hillary Clinton is saying that she has COVID, therefore she will not be on the campaign trail with Kamala, which I don't know why she would be, or her campaign headquarters or whatever. I still don't know why they would be doing anything together. Um, but that's going to be the next step of, they're gonna say that so-and-so has it, so-and-so has it, and then September 10th, suddenly, <laughs> cough, cough, Kamala's got it, she can't do the debate. I'm fully expecting that. You would think that if the DNC was the super spreader, they're saying that you would have heard of everybody coming out with it. If now they're going to say that Bill Clinton's going to take over for whatever Hillary Clinton was going to be doing, you have to ask the same question. Well, ma'am, wasn't he at the DNC with you? Isn't he your husband? Don't y'all whatever? Ugh, ugh. But anyway, shouldn't he also have it? What about Barack and Michelle Obama? What about Joe Biden and Jill? What about Kamala and Doug Imhoff? Wouldn't they all, Tim Walls and Gwen, wouldn't they all have at this point kind of super spread to each other? Suspicious, very suspicious. Hillary Clinton's probably just like, I'm not sick, but I can't deal with Kamala's lying ass anymore. I don't want to do anything with this. It's, it's making me look bad. Take me out. Somebody make it so that I don't have to do this. And they're like, got it. Tell them you got COVID. It still works. It's been a couple years, but it still works. Cause now we're telling people that it's back and bigger than ever. So anyway, 
At the same time that you have Joe Biden sitting on a beach and Kamala Harris tweeting a bunch of crap about Donald Trump, you have the families of the fallen soldiers from the Afghanistan uh, Abbey, Abbey, Abbey Bridge or Abbey Gate. Dang it. I'm so bad with names. The, the bombing that killed 13 U.S. Uh, soldiers, men and women. And remember, Donald Trump went to Arlington National Cemetery to be with them while they played, uh, placed the wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier. And you have Kamala Harris talking shit and Joe Biden talking shit about how he did it for publicity and whatever else. And yet you have, I want you to see this. These are videos that were posted by the parents of the service men and women that lost their lives in Afghanistan, posting videos, thanking Donald Trump for being there with them. He did not use that opportunity to do anything political. Yes, there was somebody there that took a picture. Yes, there was somebody there that, that videoed it, but it was for the family and everything else. It was not for any political reasons. He didn't speak about anything. He was quiet. He was solemn. He stood there for the family, gave them a shoulder to grieve on. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris didn't do anything. They sat on the beach or they did their campaign trail. They did nothing for these men and women. And at the same time, it is their fault these men and women are, are dead. I mean, their withdrawal from Afghanistan was a complete botched BS kind of thing. And they have never apologized for what they have done to these families. And these families have come out and they have made videos, again, talking about how Donald Trump was great for showing up and you know basically telling Kamala and Joe they can suck it because as the people who are responsible for their children's death they should have been the ones to show up at Arlington National Cemetery not even Donald Trump it should have been the people that caused it should have been there to apologize for it and and take some of the brunt and the burden off these parents and they weren't so it says here in response to Kamala Harris Harris's disgusting post Eight gold star parents sent Trump videos of them ripping her for causing their children's death, ignoring, excuse me, ignoring them and politicizing Trump's visit to Arlington. Um, Kamala really stepped in it with this one. Wow. So because Kamala Harris had a post that I don't, I don't think I saved her post because it was absolute trash. And here again, here are the men and women in uniform that lost their lives. Just so you guys can see that we've talked about it before, but I wanted to show you again. And I don't have Kamala's words here, but it was basically a small bitch fest that she she wrote up on X and it was absolutely trash and it should never have been posted in my opinion. And I'm glad that these men and women are speaking up not only in defense of Donald Trump for being there, but also pointing out exactly how bad Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are when it comes to actually giving a shit about the citizens of the country, the parents of the fallen soldiers, the fallen soldiers themselves. I, I think it's very important. Another thing that's going on right now, September 18th is supposed to be a huge day, right? Because will he or won't he go to jail kind of thing with Donald Trump. You have Juan Merchan, I think that's how you say his name, Merchan, Merchan, trying to send Donald Trump basically to Rikers Island. And Laura Loomer posted this up. I have questions about it, but we're going to read it to you first. And then we're going to kind of maybe pick it apart just a hint. Not a lot because I, I trust Laura Loomer like a lot with what she says. But it says here, a federal law enforcement agent has just told me that the New York State National Guard has started staging guardsmen in hotels around the NYC courthouse where President Trump is going to be sentenced on September 18th as they are expecting that Trump will be taken into custody and sent directly to Rikers Island by Judge Juan Marchand. Uh, sources, the source says the National Guard is being staged there because the mayor of NYC, Eric Adams, douchey douche, and the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, Hochul, whatever, also douchey douche, both believe the police unions are preparing to stage a mass out sick day in support of President Trump on September 18th because none of the officers want to be involved in the persecution of Donald Trump. Smart officers, uh, in my opinion. Now, I will say that it seems a tad early because this came out a day or two ago. Today is September 1st, by the way. So um, it's new month, right? This came out a day or two ago. It seems early to be st staging National Guards there already in, in anticipation of something that's going to happen in over two weeks. So maybe there is a little bit of something lost in translation be between her source and what's actually going on. Maybe there's somebody staying there. Maybe there's some other issue that, that the mayor and the governor are anticipating in New York right now. 
fully highly possible that it's exactly what Laura Loomer has here, what her source is saying, that it's for the September 18th thing. It just feels a little early, and it makes me go, well, why are you pulling National Guardsmen now? Like, shouldn't they be doing something else until then to keep other areas safe? But it is something to definitely keep an eye on, so I'll be keeping an eye on Laura Loomer on X and what's going on, watching some of the news that I can find in New York City itself to see if they're showing anything like that. But I think that um, September 18th is going to be massive no matter how you look at it if you do have cops that stage a walkout or call in sick that day because they refuse to be the ones to put handcuffs on donald trump more power to them back the blue I, not everybody agrees with that and yes there's bad cops there's bad everything but back the blue without them think about it the first time something happens to you your first instinct is to call the police for some sort of protection backup whatever so anyway not anyway Oh, side note, speaking of um, sick days or calling out or going on strike, there's a ton of hospitality, Kamala Harris, because you don't know how to say it, you keep calling it hospitality. There are a lot of hospitality workers in hotels right now who have gone out on strike today. This morning, Sunday morning, they went on strike against numerous hotels, whether it was Hyatt or Hilton or Marriott and Omni even. They went on strike because they're in a union and they've been working since last year with the union trying to figure out better raises, better pay, more um, help since the pandemic era everything kind of went to crap in the hospitality industry they've been trying to get that figured out with their union and nothing happened today they didn't come to an agreement on anything so there are from it said from honolulu to boston to la like all across the country and in hawaii people hospitality workers at, at hotels have walked out, have gone on strike. You have the, the front desk people, you have the bellhops, you have the food service in there, you have the housekeepers, you have the valets, all of them going out on strike. And that's going to, I mean, it's Labor Day weekend, which is a great time to go on strike as the labor force that is asking for better pay and better working conditions, right? through these unions. So they go out on strike right now. At the same time, most Americans who have the ability are trying to go on vacation for the three day weekend. You get Monday off. So your kid doesn't have school. Maybe you don't have to go to work. Although weirdly Labor Day, a lot of people have to go to work on Labor Day. I feel like that most businesses have forgotten what Labor Day is about. Same businesses that make families go to work on Christmas Day and Thanksgiving, but that's not the point of any of this. Just, I, th I thought that was something that should be mentioned in case you guys weren't aware that that was going on. Maybe you're headed out on vacation and you get to your hotel and you're like, what the crap is happening? Now you have a little bit of a heads up. Now, the other thing I have here, I just want to show you this. This guy was kicked off his Delta flight for wearing a President Trump t-shirt. You guys can see here, look at his shirt. It's the Hawk Tua and it's basically, it's, it's Donald Trump giving the middle finger on both sides and it says Hawk Tua on that thing. Y'all remember the Hawk Tua girl got real popular for a minute for a bit. <laughs> that thing yeah anyway so he's getting kicked off of a delta flight because of his trump t-shirt there is no cursing on it although he is holding up a middle finger but i mean babies hold up middle fingers all the time the only way the middle finger has a bad meaning to it is if we give it bad meaning same thing with curse words the only reason people think the word shit is bad is because at some point we were told that the word shit's a curse word same thing with numerous other ones right but this man was literally kicked off for wearing a a trump shirt how many people have you seen kicked off for wearing Biden shirts, Kamala Harris t-shirts, Hillary t-shirts, Bill t-shirts, any of those, Obama, Big, Big Mike, any of those? You don't. Yet the same flight, the same company, Delta, that is kicking this man off for wearing a Trump shirt is the same one that lets their stewards and stewardesses wear free Palestine pins and have their own political thoughts and, and things on that. Uh, Black Lives Matter and gay pride and whatever else. But because this man's wearing a Trump shirt, he's kicked off of his flight. Now, is it possible that something happened that didn't make it onto this video and he was being aggressive with somebody? Sure. Do I have that? No. This is what we have right now. Is this man getting kicked off because of his shirt, which is what is he tells the person recording and the lady behind him, he calls her this bitch Wendy, uh, does not say that that is not why he's being kicked off the flight. So keep that in mind next time you go somewhere wearing your Trump shirt and they try to tell you that you can't be there because of your shirt. Mm, I see a lawsuit coming. Okay, Delta. Now, remember when we had to wear face masks everywhere and if you didn't have a face mask on, they would pretty much try to stone you in the middle of the street in front of everybody. They'd kick you out of restaurants. They'd call the police on you if you weren't covering your face. Y'all remember that, right? Well, then it came out that that shit doesn't really do anything except for make you breathe your own stuff and cloth masks don't do crap and whatever else. 
So then they got rid of the mask mandates and, and numerous other things that Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris mandated for this country that destroyed, destroyed lives because they lost their jobs, because they lost their ability to be in the military, numerous, numerous things, right? Lost their health because they were forced to get these jabs. But anyway, whatever. Um, the, the mask mandate was a huge one. There was, there was, you were going to mask up or you weren't. There was no middle of the road for most people, right? Well, Nassau County in New York was like, listen, you people are taking this mask thing way too far. And a lot of people are wearing them now in, in efforts of hiding their face. And this happened because of all the protests that were going on in the colleges for the pro-Palestine, the free Hamas, the free Gaza, the whatever they were trying to protest, right? It's always different, whatever. But they were wearing face masks. And they were wearing face masks because they, they said, look, masks protect people who express political opinions that are unpopular. Making anonymous protest illegal chills political action and is ripe for selective enforcement, leading to doxing, surveillance, and retaliation against protesters. This is what people are saying who don't agree with the fact that New York County signed the first mask ban in the US, into U.S. law, sparking you know issues and debate. This happened on August 6th. The bill was passed by the Republican-controlled Nassau, Nass, Nassau County Legislature on August 6th. Howard Copel, a Republican legislator, voted for it, blah, 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 blah. The reason this is important right now, they passed this that you could not have in out in um, public. You could not wear a face covering that would completely hide your identity. You want to wear like a here, but a whole face covering is not allowed. You didn't need a whole ass face covering during COVID. You didn't need the rest of it either, but not the point here at all. But they made it so you cannot wear these things because not only of the C-19 stuff, but also because of all of the protests at the colleges, right? And here's my personal opinion real fast before I show you this video. If you're, if you're chicken shit enough to have to cover your face, then I don't care what your political stance is. I don't care what you're talking about. If you don't have the balls to sack up and own how you feel about stuff and what you think, you shouldn't be out there protesting. Go sit in your mom's basement, eat your, eat your ice cream and cry about whatever it is you need to cry about, but stay out of the street, stay out of the college camp campuses, stay off of platforms. You know, th anyway, that's just me. That's my first uh, personal opinion on that. Uh, but this person here, the reason I'm telling you this, the NYPD, the New York Police Department, has made their first arrest using the new mask ban in Nassau County. Wait, hold on. It turns out, y'all, he planned an armed robbery. Oh, <laughs> and also he's an illegal alien. So there's that. I Wait, stop it. I want you to see it. I want you to see and hear exactly what this is. Before I hit play, this is... Ninja, please, like you, you, you tell me you're walking out your house like that in August when it's hot as Hades and you're just, it's for your own health. Bullshit. You're trying to kill somebody. All right, let's go. Play. Play now. Play. This man okay. arrested on Spindle Road in Hicksville on Sunday Hicksville. is a teenager. 18-year-old <laughs> Wesleyan Omar Ramirez Castillo of Hicksville was approached by police after they say they received reports of a suspicious man walking. They found him wearing this mask and noticed a large bulge in his waistband, <laughs> which they say was this 14-inch knife. Ramirez Castillo was arrested and charged with criminal possession of a weapon. And for the first time in Nassau County, he was charged with Title 90 Mass Transparency Act. The teen was arraigned on Monday. He's born in Guatemala. He entered the country illegally in 2019 over in Texas. Uh, ICE has been notified on this individual. He has loose ties to gang affiliations. Nassau Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder and County Executive Bruce Blakeman touting the arrest as a win. And it's another tool in the toolbox for our police department. We averted a crime. Somebody could have been stabbed as a result of this. Look, do they have some sort of physical proof that that man was about to go rob somebody? No, unless he flat out said, yo, I was about to go rob somebody. Of course, they don't have 100% can say that. But bro, you're illegal. You're fully covered up. You have a 14 inch knife in your waistband and you're walking the streets at night. Mm. I wouldn't have trusted you either at all in the least whatsoever. But I think it's important to, to remember that that is a Republican backed and passed law in Nassau County. And the Democrats are mad because, of course, I don't know why they're mad about it. They're mad that there's the mask, the the whole law was passed because they say it's, what? Do they, how do they say it? It it it, uh, it makes anonymous protest illegal. That man wasn't protesting anything. They would they have had an issue with it if that that same person was on their way to rob or or stab one of the the Democrats? Would they have been like, oh man, 
I, I'm, I'm mad that I'm stabbed and I'm in the hospital right now. Um, but it, I really wish y'all hadn't made this a law that he couldn't be, be masked up because it's, it's not fair to him because, you know, whatever. I also like that he's illegal. Like, the things that the Democrats are for do not make a lick of sense to me. But anyways, but anyways, let's move on here. Danica Patrick. I don't know if you guys know who Danica Patrick is. She was... I don't know if she was engaged to, but I know she was with Aaron Rodgers from Green Bay Packers for like a very, very long time. Danica Patrick, she's basically a badass. She's a girl who drives, who races, and I think that's amazing. I myself am a girl who prefers to drive manual as fast as possible around tight turns or in a straight line. I will race anybody, anytime. I'm a, I'm a car girl, right? I'm a, I'm a driver. So I'm a big fan of Danica Patrick. But this is her, in case anybody's curious, gorgeous woman. She says... I love it. So many Democrat voting women, often married, think Trump is untrustworthy because they believe he slept with side chicks. Okay. So now they are going to demonstrate how much they hate Trump by voting for the actual side chick, Kamala Harris. It's honestly amazing. I mean, ask Mrs. Willie Brown if she thinks that Kamala Harris is a trustworthy individual. Pretty sure she's gonna say no. But the irony or the hypocrisy or the lack of, you know, putting two and two together for most of the Democrats that are voting for Kamala Harris, it, 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 it has to be pointed out very often because it's just, it's comical. Everybody needs a little comedy on their Sunday. Speaking of comedy, this isn't very comedic except for the fact it needs to be heard. This is from Ronald Reagan. I would also like to point out that there is a movie right now called Reagan with... Dennis Quaid, because Randy Quaid's the, the brother, Dennis Quaid playing Ronald Reagan, and it is being basically suppressed every which way humanly possible. You won't see a preview for it. You won't see it really showing up in very many theaters, and you're hearing the, the mainstream media, when they do talk about it, say that it's a horrible movie. It's gotten like an 18% from the critics and from people in power, although audience has given it like a 98% of how much they love it. That should tell you something when Americans love it, but the government hates it. Obviously it's good for Americans, bad for government, but I want you to hear what Ronald Reagan had to say back in the day. Please hold. Okay. Let's see if I can get the volume back up on this one. Let's try again. All right, here we go. Ready? Work. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. How do we call a liberal? You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. And what is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny. Which I think is very important to remember. The more Democrats you have in places of power, the less actual control you have over your own life, the less liberty you have, the less American freedoms you have, the less constitutional rights you have. The Democrats are the same ones who want to get rid of the Constitution because they feel like something that was written at the founding of our country no longer applies to what they want our country to be now. That, to me, is definitely a slippery slope. When you're going after the amendments, when you're going after the Constitution, it lets you know that they are not for the people. They are for themselves and what they can get out of it. They are for total control. Screw you. Screw me. As long as they get what they want. That's what it comes down to. And we have to keep that in mind because voting is very, very soon. It is September 1st. 30, there's 30 days in September or 31. I don't remember. I know there's 31 days in October because Halloween. So we'll say 31 and 31. We'll say 62 plus 567. I feel like we're off a day. So we'll say 66 days until voting. They have that much time to try to continue to lie to the American people about who Kamala Harris is and lie to the American people about who Donald Trump is because you don't see them telling you the truth about Donald Trump. You don't see them telling you the truth about Kamala Harris. It's all about lies and which one you will believe the most. Who, whoever tells the biggest lie is, is pretty much how it goes. And right now, that is Kamala Harris all day long and her campaign and these news outlets that are all up her ass and all about her for whatever reasons. I have to assume it's money related. No other reason why anybody would want to back Kamala Harris unless there was money involved in it. I feel like we're going to see over the next 60, we just said how many days? What did we say? 64, 60, 65, 66. Crap. I already forgot. Over the next whatever many days, we're going to see a lot happen. It is going to be the most tense 
60 something days um, since the last tense 60 something days, uh, the last election period, right? But you're going to have the September 4th is going to roll around. There will be no debate because Kamala backed out of that debate. September 10th will show up. And what will we see? Will Kamala Harris show up for that debate or will she not? Um, and then we have the October surprise. Will Joe Biden officially step back all the way and hand the reins, the full presidency over to Kamala Harris? And then we have the election itself on November 5th. Are we going to have actual real tallied results because you have the Democrats right now pushing that having voter laws, voter ID laws is not right. And it's, I don't even know what they're trying to say. We are literally one of the only countries in the entire world that does not have some sort of voter ID law set in place where if you don't have an ID, you don't get to vote. And I personally think that if you can't show an ID to show who you are, you shouldn't be able to vote and you should not be illegal at the same time. And that's also where we have issues because illegal immigrants are being given driver's licenses so they can go vote. Minnesota, Tim Walls, other places, California as well. I mean, Everything is being done right now to make it so that whatever happens November 5th, you're going to have people screaming that it's not real, that it's been tampered with, that it's whatever, because you have so many people voting that shouldn't be able to vote. You have people not wanting to certify the votes, uh, Democrats mostly, not wanting to certify that the votes are real. It's going to be absolute chaos. And if things go the way that people worry, they're, they're going to pick Kamala Harris up and just plop her down into the presidential winning seat on November 5th, I do believe you will see absolute chaos in the streets. I feel like you will see the next civil war. And it's it's literally going to be right versus wrong, um, good versus evil. It's not going to be Democrat, Republican. It's going to be people who are for morality and honesty and the truth fighting against people who are against immorality and lies and whatever benefits them and screw the rest of everybody else. It's going to be epic, like epic. I'm literally picturing uh, Avengers. I think it was Endgame, the last one where everybody was up against Thanos. That's what I'm picturing in the streets of you know, Destin and in Atlanta and in Milwaukee places and somewhere up in, you know, Minnesota and Michigan and over in Vegas and whatever, just all these random spots, just Avengers in the streets. Anyway, that is all for now. Listen, I love y'all immensely. Thanks for letting me have this whole long spiel with you. And tomorrow is September the 2nd. It is Monday. I know a lot of people will be off of work. A lot of people will still be working. I will see you guys at some point tomorrow. Don't know when. Make sure you hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when it happens. But until then, enjoy the rest of your day. And I love you all. And I'll see you later. Bye.